you can see that I don't have that achievement yet, so it turns black. And if I hit play and I go see the fog, you can see that now I have the achievement. You can see that I have the one trophy unlocked, while the others are not, because there are the different types. And when I touch on a certain trophy, I get that trophy's description. And if you want to add new achievements, it's just a matter of adding one line of code. All right. Hi, I'm Reiki. Today I'm on the 23rd episode of the Endless Runner series, and in this episode, we'll take a look on how to implement achievements to our game. Achievements are a very popular feature, basically present in any video game nowadays. I'm going to show you how to add them to your game without using any third-party tools. We'll implement achievements using a trophy displaying case. That means that for every achievement, we'll have a physical object in our game that will represent that achievement. The way we are going to do this today is we're going to make some very basic UI first, then make the scripting logic and add a visual feedback to show what trophy gives what achievement. And once you've made the main scripting logic, adding a new achievement is just going to be writing one line of code somewhere in your code. I'm also going to show you an example for one achievement later in the episode. This series is based on a video game that I've already made and published called Boat Venture. If you want to know how this finished product will look like, do check it out, link in the description. It's free for all Android devices 9 plus on the Play Store. Alright, so let's start. First I'm gonna do the UI, so I'm gonna make a very simple menu, just like the info or the options menu. If you wanna know more about that, then do check out the previous episode, link in the description. But I'm just gonna do a very quick time lapse. All right, so here we have our achievements menu, very simple, just like our previous menus. You can go to it by clicking on the button, click again, we go to the shop, and in here we just have two images, one for the trophy, one for the shelf. And before we add any more trophies, let's script one, and then we can duplicate it. All right, now let's close this. Uh, you also notice that I imported a sprite. You can download it and use it for free, link in the description. Now I'm going to select our achievement, or rather our trophy, right here. Actually, let me go to the achievement menu. And we actually want to turn this into a button. So let me add the button component. All right. Now for the coding, we are going to need two scripts, one for the achievement and one as an achievement manager. First, let's make the achievement script. And we're just going to make an edit right now here. In here, first we need a way to differentiate between achievements. So we're just going to use enums. I've put some dummy values right now. We're going to change them later. And I've also made a value of the enum. Actually, let me fix that. All right. Now let's make a function to check whether this achievement has been unlocked or not. And we're going to call this function both from here and from the achievements manager. So let's make it public. Now in here, to check whether we have this achievement or not, it's much like the shop system. We're just going to use player prefs with enums. This way, we're going to use player prefs to set and get the values of the enums. And if the value is zero, then it means that the achievement is still locked. While if it's not zero, so if we set it to one, then it's unlocked. Now I want both a way to show whether the trophy is locked or not, and also want a value. So let's make a new public boolean value. And because we only want to change this value in here and not from other scripts, let's make a get private set properties. Great. And this is for the boolean value. While for the trophy visual, we're just going to change the image color. So let's get a reference to the image. Remember to import from unityengine.ui and to get the component in the awake method. So now in our function, when the achievement is locked, 
I want to change the image color to be black. This way it looks like we still haven't got that achievement, we still haven't gotten that trophy. While if it is unlocked, we set it to white, which means that it will keep the original color. And we also want to change the is unlocked boolean to true in here. And we don't really need to set it to false in here. All right, and now let's also call this function in the awake method. And now we need a way to actually unlock the achievement. So let's make a new public void function just for that. Do you note that I've called this function unlock this achievement because we are not going to call this function directly, but we are going to use the achievements manager to call this function. With the shop system, we have made it that we can just change the player path of whatever item we want. While for this achievement system, I prefer using a specified function. In here, we just set the player path of this achievement's type value to 1. And then we just call the check if achievement is unlocked function. Great, now we just need a way to actually call this function from somewhere. And that's where our achievements manager script comes in. Let's go back to Unity, let's select our shop manager, and let's make this new script. We're gonna interact with this script from other scripts to unlock an achievement, so first thing first, let's make a singleton pattern. Then let's make a new public void function called unlock achievement. With this function, I want to be able to get a certain achievement type and then call the certain trophy with that achievement type and call the unlock achievement function on that script, or rather the unlock this achievement function. So let's add an achievement type parameter. And then we need a reference to all our trophies to find the correct achievement. So to get all the achievement, let's just use an array that we're gonna fill in later in the inspector. Then let's use the array.find function to find the correct achievement with the same achievement type of the one that we want here. To do this though, we need to change the privacy settings of the achievements value. So let's go back to the achievement script. And because we want this to be serialized in the inspector and we want to read it from elsewhere, but only be able to set it in here, Let's add a duplicate value to get a get private set kind of system going on. All right, back to the achievements manager. Let's finish the function. And now that we got this achievement to unlock that we know is the same of this one, we need to do two things before we unlock it. First, we need to check whether we have actually gotten a trophy. Maybe we are trying to unlock an achievement without a trophy. So first, let's check whether it's null. If it's null, so if there is no trophy with that achievement, we just debug a warning saying that we don't have that achievement yet and we return from the function. Then we also want to check whether the trophy has been unlocked already. And if it isn't unlocked, then we unlock it. And that's it. That's the main logic of our achievement system. To show you an example of how easy it is now to add a new achievement, let's go back to Unity. Remember to add the reference to our trophy, so just like that. Now let's select our trophy, and right now we have the dummy1 value. Let's change that to say CFOG. Because we want to make this trophy to be unlocked when the player first sees the fog which is an enemy that the player found after a sent on while. What we need to do is very easy. We just grab the script that activates the fog. In my case, it's just called fog. And then the function that activates it, we just need to add one line of code. We call the achievements manager. We call the unlock achievement function, and then we just need to tell it which achievements type to unlock. And that's it. Now let's go back to Unity and let's see how it looks. You can see that by default, to see how things look, I've kept the trophies to be of white color. But if we hit play, you can see that I don't have that achievement yet, so it turns black. And if I hit play and I go see the fog, here comes the fog. Now if I just lose, you can see that now I have the achievement. 
If I close the game and start again, you can see that I still have it. So that's great. We have an achievement system going on. Let's just make it a little prettier. Let's add a visual feedback. I want to make it so that when the player touches a trophy, he sees the name and the description of that trophy. So basically the name of the trophy and a little tip on how to get it. So let's open our shop menu again. And while we're here, I'm also going to duplicate some more trophies just for show. And I'm going to put the two text right here. All right, perfect. Now let's go in the Achievements Manager. And first thing first, let's make a reference to the two texts. Then let's make a public void function to change those two texts, given two parameter values. And we just change those two text values to the parameter values. Then let's grab the achievement script and in here we're going to call the achievements manager when we touch the trophy. So let's make a new public void function called onTouchTrophy. As you may have guessed, we're going to call this function from the button. In here we just need to call the achievements manager's function. While for the values, we're going to make two new strings. And fit them in. All right, let's go back to Unity. Let's put in the references and let's fill in the achievement strings. So right here, I'm gonna say that the title is fog and the description is see the fog for the first time. And just see the fog. All right, there's the police in my courtyard. Anyway, let's add to the button event the achievements function on touch achievement, on touch trophy, sorry. And make sure that each trophy only has the one achievement type unique to it. So in my case, the trophy on the top left has the sea fog achievement, but you can see that other trophies also have that achievement, so they're gonna be duplicated. Of course, we don't want that. We want one trophy for each achievement. So for now, I'm just going to put them to dummy values. And for the second trophy, I'm also going to add some dummy values just to see the text change. And the trophy name and trophy description text, we're going to have to empty them out. Instead, I'm just going to say in the trophy name text, touch a trophy to inspect them. All right, now let's go back to the shop menu and let's see how it looks. All right, you can see that we have one achievement unlocked while the others are not because of a different type. And when I touch on a trophy, I get that the name and description. And one thing though, I dumbly forgot to duplicate the trophies only after making the button event. So I suggest you to just pick each trophy individually and put the event just like that. Sorry for the inconvenience. All right, now let's actually test it. All right, I go to the achievements menu. You can see that I have the one trophy unlocked while the others are not because they are the different types. And when I touch on a certain trophy, I get that trophy's description. So you can see that the one achievement that we have, it says fog and see the fog have some dummy values for the second achievement, while for the others we don't have anything, so they're empty. And if you want to add new achievements, it's just a matter of adding one line of code. All right, all right, so that's it for this episode. Hope you learned something new. If you like this content and you want more, please like and subscribe. And if you have any doubts about the code or any suggestions about our next topic that you'd like to see, do tell me in the comments. 
Next episode we're gonna make the lantern, a type of item effective against the fog. But not only that, we also make a system so that if a player reaches a bonus, so if he collects enough money in a row, he doesn't just have a chance to get some extra coins, you also have a chance to get some extra fuel for the lantern, or maybe an extra net, another type of item that we have already made. Alright, and I'll see you in the next video.